OK, so we're going to be moving on to now some things to do with sums of series. And I think this is where the chapter becomes <clears throat> extra challenging, really. So if you've already looked at series from Pure Maths, then this should all be quite familiar to you. Now, the from Pure Maths, we have these two formulae that tell us how to find out the sum of a particular series. And in fact, we're talking about geometric series here. I've got these ones that are from the formula book, and I've got these two that are just from notes that I've used for Pure Maths as well. And then in the orange box at the top, I've got how these have been adapted for complex numbers. But actually, they are just the same thing. So just a quick recap of these formulae that I've got at the bottom here. The Sn and S of the infinity that we have here is referring to the sum of the first n terms of the series and the sum of the infinite series that we've got here. And A is going to refer to the first term in the series. And R is the common ratio. And N is the number of terms. So A is the first term. R is the common ratio, what it's being multiplied by, and N is the number of terms. And so for these two that we've got at the top here, they're just saying that if you have a, um, a series that goes with these two complex numbers, W and Z, you start with a complex number W, you multiply it by Z to get the next one, you multiply it by Z again, and you keep multiplying it by Z. That's starting from R equals zero to N minus one. Because if you look at this formula that we've got here, when r is equal to 0, we just have w multiplied by 1. And there will be n terms here in total. The formula is w z to the n minus 1 over z minus 1. Now, actually, this is the same as this formula that we have here. And it's the same as this formula that we have here. The only thing that's different, and it doesn't need to be any different, is that the numerator and denominator have both been multiplied by minus 1. If I multiply it by minus 1 on the top and bottom, I would get 1 minus z to the n over 1 minus z. So with the complex numbers, instead of using a, they've decided to use w as the first term. And for the common ratio, I suppose not to confuse it with the exponential, sorry, the not to confuse it with the modulus of the number, they've used that the common ratio here is just going to be z. But I don't like to have to remember this as an extra formula. I like to remember this formula, and I like to use the formula book here to help me to remember this. It's the same thing with this part, apart from this is going all the way up to infinity. And so the sum to infinity is a over 1 minus r. But a is w, because w is the first term in this series. And the common ratio is z, because each time you go along this series, you are multiplying it by z. So my recommendation is that I think this one and this one are the most useful, but I will probably use it in the form where I've multiplied the top and bottom by minus one. I'll probably use this one being multiplied by minus one on the top and bottom, just because it's going to be a little bit easier to do some of the manipulation, but not that much easier, okay? So we're gonna try and apply this to complex numbers. I'm gonna keep those formally visible so that we can use it. And this time we're gonna show that if z is equal to e to the pi over 4i, then the sum of, from r equals 0 to 8, of z to the power of r is equal to 1. So I just first of all want to explore what this looks like. From r equals 0 to 8 of z to the power of r. Well, that's going to be z to the power of 0 plus z to the power of 1 plus z squared plus all the way up to z to the power of 8. OK, so z to the power of 0 is just 1, z to the power of 1 is e to the pi over 4i. z squared would be e to the pi over 2i. I'm going to do z cubed as well. It would be e to the 3 pi over 4i. And then my last one would be the uh, argument, which is pi over 4 being multiplied by 8, which is e to the 2 pi i, because pi over 4 times 8 is 2 pi. So when I look at this series, I want to identify these three things that I've got here. I want to identify the first term, the common ratio, and the number of terms. So the first term is clearly a. The common ratio that it's being multiplied by each time is e to the pi over 4i. And the number of terms isn't 8, it's actually 9 because of the fact that r is starting from 0. So I can actually go straight in with the formula now and say that from r equals 0 to 8 of z to the power of r, it is equal to, and we're using the one that's in the blue box, a, 
instead of doing 1 minus r, I'm going to do r minus 1 all over r minus 1. Oop, that's not right. The formula is going to be this. It's going to be r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. Obviously, a is 1, though. So r to the n is going to be e to the pi over 4 multiplied by n i minus 1 over e to the power of pi over 4i minus 1. Now, you can actually calculate um, what the... Why am I saying n here? That's rather silly of me. This isn't going to be n, is it? It's going to be 8. So it's e to the power of pi over 4 times 8, which is 2 pi i. Now, I can actually evaluate the top and bottom here. I think of e to the power of 2 pi i I instantly think of the argon diagram and I know that 2 pi is over here. So I know that that is all going to be equal to uh, 1. Does that seem right? E to the 2 pi. Again, I'm going to change this one more time. <laughs> because n is 9, I'm going to take it a little bit slower so I don't make another mistake. So there is my r. And I'm going to raise that to the power of 9. Sorry about that, guys. So that's e to the power of 9 pi over 4i minus 1 over e to the power of pi over 4i minus 1. Now, the argument is 9 pi over 4, which we know we can subtract 2 pi from because it's not the principal argument. And if you do 9 over 4 and you subtract 2, you just get pi over 4. So that tells me that e to the power of 9 pi over 4i is the same as e to the power of pi over 4i. So I can rewrite the numerator as e to the power of pi over 4i minus 1. And the denominator is also equal to e to the power of pi over 4 minus 1. Because the no denominator and numerator are exactly the same, I can just say that this is equal to 1. Sorry about me messing up with the formula there. I think the reason that they use they don't use this version of the formula is to avoid using the letter R because R has so many different meanings. It has a meaning in this case, it also has the meaning of modulus. But if you're just going to be remembering the formula, personally, I would just remember it like this. If you need to, you could always replace it with W Z to the N minus one over Z minus one, recognizing that W is the first term and Z is the common ratio. I'll leave that in actually just in case it's useful. Okay, we're going to do one more example like this. This time it is not written in exponential form, and usually it's going to be a good idea to put things in exponential form, as that seems to be the most useful um, tool that we have so far. So we have 1 plus root 3i. So there's 1 across root 3 up, for the complex number. So we can see for this complex number, 1 plus i root 3 or root 3i, the modulus of that is just going to be 2 because 1 plus root 3 squared, square rooted, is 2. And this angle is going to be pi over 3. Let's just write that in a little bit neater. It is going to be pi over 3 because the inverse tan of uh, root 3 over 1 is pi over 3. So that is going to be 2e to the pi over 3i. So what we're actually doing here is we are summing up from r equals 0 to 5 of 2e to the pi over 3i to the power of r. Now, let's just think about what that's actually meaning. We would start off with it to the power of 0, which is just 1. Then our next one would be it to the power of 1 which is just going to be this. Now, the next time it's being squared, so that would be 2 squared e to the 2 pi over 3i. And then I'm just going to do the next one for an extra. So it would be 2 cubed e to the power of 3 pi over 3i, in other words, pi over, uh, just pi. And we'll have one more, and our last one will be 2 to the power of 5 e to the power of 5 pi over 3i. So we said a is equal to, or w is equal to, we can either say that w is equal to 1 or a is equal to 1. And the common ratio that it's being multiplied by each time 
is 2e to the pi over 3i, or the complex number formula would just use z instead to avoid using repeat letters. There's some other things that we know here, and that's the number of terms in this series. There is going to be six, one, two, three, four, five, six, because you're including r equals zero. So this is going to be equal to, the formula says that it is a brackets z to the n minus one over z minus one. So I'm just gonna go straight in using that. It's going to be one. Now z to the n is going to be 2e to the pi over 3i to the power of 6 minus 1 all over 2e pi over 3i minus 1. So I'm just going to evaluate some of these things that I've got at the top here. 2 to the power of 6 is going to be 64. And e to the pi over 3 to the power of pi over 3i to the power of 6, you multiply those together and pi over 3 times 6 is 2 pi. And that's going to be minus 1. And on the bottom, we have got 2e to the pi over 3i minus 1. Now that we have it looking like this, these are just numbers, okay? This thing that I've got here and here are literally just complex numbers. So e to the 2 pi i, quick sketch, 2 pi is over here. So I know that that is just going to be 1 as a real number. So in the numerator, it's just going to be 64 times 1 minus 1. And then I've got 2 e to the pi over 3. Now I actually worked out that 2 e to the pi over 3 i, I worked that out somewhere earlier on, that it is just this. It is 1 plus i root 3. So this is 1 plus i root 3, and I've still got the minus 1. So I get 63 over i root 3. Well, let's deal with the 63 divided by the root 3, which is just going to be 21 root 3 over i. And we don't like having the i in the denominator there, so I can multiply the top and bottom by i, which will give me... 21 root 3 i divided by i times i, which is minus 1. So it is minus 21 root 3 i, just as the question said it was going to be. So there's not many questions that are like this in the textbook, but now is a good chance to have a go at doing exercise 1e, question 2, and question 3.